All right, welcome everyone uh, to this uh, improvised uh, workshop. Um, thank you to uh, Luca from uh, Archway um, for allowing us to uh, use some of his time. Uh, and I'm very happy to, uh, uh, to do this. Uh, I'm Thomas, I'm developer relations at uh, Polymer Labs, and we are accelerating IBC adoption. And I'm gonna go through a few slides to uh, explain what Polymer is and how it fits within the IBC SDK, which is really going to be the topic of this talk. Um, and I'm going to also run through uh, a demo, um, basically going from initialization to sending a packet um, in you know, under five minutes. All right, so at Polymer, um, we kind of like to make this um, comparison, um, interoperability versus you know, the OSI model. And so the OSI model for networking, uh, basically you have the separation of layers there, application, transport, state. What we're saying at Polymer is that IBC or interoperability models in general uh, have a similar thing. So we have the application level on, or layer on top. Uh, this is where application developers uh, are operating. And then IBC originally had the separation already between application layer and uh, tau layer or transportation layer, uh, which is basically tau transportation authentication ordering. But in Polymer, uh, we believe that we actually need to split it out further. So we have transport layer, which is essentially the semantics of uh, IBC channels, connections, uh, very much like TCP IP. And then we have state layer, right? So, yeah, this is um, just um, shown as in uh, a regular Cosmos chain. So application transport state, remember from the last slide, in a Cosmos chain, uh, this looks as follows. So you have uh, an IBC application. Um, IBC Go is essentially the um, native transport layer uh, implementation in Cosmos SDK chains. And then we have you know, our light clients. And to make this a little bit more uh, visual, um, so you see through the colors that our light clients are essentially tracking uh, the consensus state and are able to verify um, headers uh, to update the consensus state uh, from each other. Right? And in the middle, important, we have a relayer, which is a permissionless off-chain process, um, which um, sends over the packets um, of data. Right? So this is um, IBC. Uh, when we have the light clients on chain, we can build a connection on top, and then we can uh, create channels on top. So for those of you who may not be too familiar with IBC, probably most of you are, um, IBC has three main abstraction layers. We have the clients, the connections, and the channels. Right? So this is just an overview of IBC, as you know and love it. Um, uh, as I said, two Cosmos chains, uh, light clients, uh, transport layer, applications, and uh, connections channels, and you can send packets. Now, Polymer, we said, is accelerating IBC adoption. So uh, another th thing to think about is, what if I want to connect to a chain that is actually not natively compatible with IBC? So how do we extend IBC beyond Cosmos? And so now on the left, you have an IBC incompatible chain. So what is the worst case scenario? Um, application developers are still you know, building their applications, but in the worst case scenario, we don't have a transport core IBC uh, layer implementation. We don't have a client that can track um, you know, Cosmos SDK chain or, or Tendermint consensus. Um, worst case scenario, we also don't have a um, Cosmos SDK light client module that can track the consensus of the IBC incompatible chain and there also isn't by default relay support. So all of these components in red, in the worst case scenario, we need to develop them, and this takes time. And because it takes time, it slows down IBC adoption. All right, so how does Polymer come in? Um, we have a number of innovations that will en enable chains that are not natively compatible with IBC to actually have IBC brought to them. And for storytelling purposes, I'm gonna um, explained in two steps. Now these things can you know, be thought of as separate things, uh, but it's just a nice story if we um, do it step by step. So first step is introducing Polymer as a middle hub. So no longer do we just have these two chains. 
we want to actually uh, ultimately connect an IBC incompatible uh, chain. And we're going to do that by adding uh, Polymer in between. Again, like, you know, this is just between two um, IBC compatible chains now, but this introduces the concept of uh, multi-hop. And so what we do is we put uh, Polymer in between. And so Polymer's consensus, which would be um, Tenderman consensus, uh, has to be tracked then by our chain A and our chain B. And on Polymer, we need to track you know, a, light, a light client for chain A and a light client for chain B. Again, if we want to create connections, here we have our connections uh, you know, between the light clients, or on top of the light clients, I should say. But now, differently, is we're not going to create a channel here and here. So we're not going to create two channels between um, chain A and Polymer on, on the one hand, and Polymer and chain B on the other hand. We're going to use multi-hop IBC and create a multi-hop channel, right? And what is actually happening under the hood is that we're not going to write state intermediately on Polymer, um, but we're going to use uh, connection proofs uh, under the hood to enable this multi-hop channel. Um, maybe I'm first going to go through the presentation and take questions after. All right, so then the, the full picture becomes this. Uh, we have Polymer in between, and it still enables A and B um, to have a channel between them. Uh, it just uses Polymer in between um, as a facilitator. Right. OK, but still, last slide. We now have you know, two Cosmos chains or IBC compatible chains. Like, you might uh, ask the question, like, why does Polymer have to be in the middle? And this is how we come to step two. So we're going to outsource the transport layer from a virtual chain, this is a term that we introduce, to Polymer. So remember our problem, right? We have potentially, in the worst case scenario, all of these uh, components that we need to uh, develop. What Polymer does, it essentially decouples the IBC app and transport layers. Um, so app and transport, in a sense, were already decoupled, but uh, we decouple it in a more literal sense, in the sense that we're actually going to put it on a different chain. And this is somewhat comparable to the modular thinking, meaning that in modular blockchains, all of the different functions, execution, uh, data availability, consensus, settlement, they can live on different chains, still making up a logical blockchain. For interoperability, remember the first slide, application layer, transport layer, uh, state layer, we can also split them up, have them on different blockchains, and still have a logical interoperability model, right? And so how does this look? This means that at Polymer, in the Polymer chain, we have an extra module called the VIBC, or Virtual IBC uh, module. And on chain A, for example, think of Ethereum, which will be shown in, in the demo. Uh, this just means that we need to deploy a number of smart contracts, uh, which enable this uh, outsourcing. So that's rather simple uh, compared to actually developing your own uh, implementation of the transport layer of IBC. OK, um, so we had the transport layer. What, what about the state, right? Uh, take Ethereum, for example. Uh, I think you know, for some people um, who know about it, it's probably a known problem that verifying tendermint consensus inside the EVM is um, prohibitively expensive, right? So how do we go about that? So what happens here? Um, this is maybe like a little bit complex, but l l let's, uh, let's move through it. So Polymer has a novel consensus uh, engine, CK Mint, which essentially enables um, to have multiple headers at the same height, which are uh, optimized for different execution targets, right? So this means that we are going to have ZK-friendly headers uh, available. And then we can have a ZK prover off-chain that is going to uh, prove tenement consensus, uh, have a ZKP, send it to a verifier contract uh, on-chain on the EVM. And um, this is a lot uh, uh, less expensive. right? And so what is also happening here is that um, Polymer is going to uh, track its own consensus because technically this is something chain A should be doing, uh, but we're going to do it uh, on behalf of them. 
Right, so here again, you know, the light clients, uh, this verifier uh, through the, the ZK prover, it's uh, omitted for clarity, um, but this is how we, you know, prove polymer state, and then, you know, blue, blue again with blue, and purple with purple. And so remember, what we ultimately want to do is make sure that, you know, chain A, chain B, even if it's a virtual chain, have a channel uh, onto which they can send IBC packets. So what we do is, you know, we have our you know, state component, we can build connections, and on top of that we have our multi-hop channel. And so ultimately what we do by this is we redefine IBC extensibility in the sense that all of these red components from before, we don't need all of that development work, we can simply uh, make sure that we have the, the virtual transport layer on this virtual chain, and then the actual um, IBC uh, heavy uh, lifting is done on the polymer chain. And so now we have this for chain A and chain B. Chain B could actually also be a virtual chain. And so you have to imagine like polymer being the IBC router hub with a lot of different chains like connecting to it uh, from di different ecosystems, not necessarily having native IBC integrations, but in the future, uh, for scaling purposes, it could also be that you know, Cosmos SDK chains are going to connect to Polymer to outsource the transport layer, um, just because you know, it, it makes sense in terms of scaling to outsource it to its specialized chain. And as I mentioned, there's two white lies in here. Um, this is not to overcomplicate it, uh, because ultimately, IBC SDK, it just wants to make sure that application developers on, you know, for example, Ethereum, uh, and on a Cosmos chain or an IBC compatible chain, but it could be any chain. If you want to build applications, all of this in the background, Polymer um, does a lot of things, does a lot of orchestration, but the application developer doesn't really care about that. They just want to, you know, deploy their applications, test it, and be up and running. And this is what the IBC SDK does, and I'll, I'll quickly run through a demo. Now, for those of you who know a little bit more about IBC, um, let's address the two white lies. And so actually I showed here a connection being built. That's technically not true. Actually, the connection is locally on Polymer because Polymer is keeping track of the state um, on behalf of uh, chain A, which is virtual. And I think I have the next slide, yeah because remember, this connection is here, and then we just need to prove things and it will be verified on chain A, but the heavy lifting, again, is, is being done on Polymer. But, if we go back, from the perspective of the DAP developer, this is just you know, regular old chain A, chain B, I want to send over packets, this can happen over the multi-hop channel. All right, and I said two white lies, <laughs> so there's, there's one more. When we look at um, the light client here, in this example, it's Ethereum. And maybe some people know, Ethereum, even post-merge, does not have single slot finality, and that means that you know, there is no finality, and for IBC, this is a problem. And so what we actually do, instead of just like regularly tracking uh, this light client, we have the concept of a native light client and a virtual light client. And I think this is on the next slide. Uh, no. What is the difference? The native light client is actually tracking uh, the consensus of Ethereum in this case, but uh, there is still the possibility of reorgs. So what a virtual light client is, is an IBC compatible client that essentially uh, picks one security pa parameter. So for example, you could say for uh, transfers, this is really important and needs the, the most security, so we're gonna wait you know, the full uh, uh, length of attestations. But for you know, another application, you could just say, we just need two block confirmations. Um, that's good enough for us. You know, there's no value attached, and we have a different light, virtual light client um, depending on the uh, security parameters. Uh, and yeah, still, you know, there's a real layer in between. I haven't focused too much on the relayers here, uh, just not to overcomplicate things, um, but also in the IBC SDK, this is being taken care of for you. 
Uh, yeah, the Cosmosm overview we'll skip. So now we're going to go to the to the demo. I think I have like 10 minutes. <laughs> Cosmosm uh, and making it more accessible is, I think, also still a challenge. Um, but yeah, um, let's go to the to the demo. If we go back to the main slide showing the demo, what is actually being demoed? Um, same setup. So on the left uh, we have chain A, um, which is going to be Ethereum. Um, so we, I have you know uh, created a, a simple smart contract uh, in Solidity, uh, which is essentially just sending a message uh, over an IBC packet. Polymer is in the middle, but actually we shouldn't really care that much about Polymer in the, in the uh, IBC SDK. And on the other side, we have a Cosm Wasm side. It's just WasmD um, that has uh, a similar contract deployed. All right, so we also have some documentation. Um, if I had known that you know, the, there was going to be a workshop, we probably would have um, open sourced that. But right now, it's still uh, private. But basically, it explains what the IBC SDK does. And um, we have some quick starts, and, and that's what we're actually going to do. Um, one more note, the IBC SDK, um, what we have right now and what we're focusing on is the CLI tool, IBC TL. Uh, it's also going to be a library, so um, other libraries on top um, can you know, just use it as, as a library. And what does it do? So essentially when we go back to, to this, it, it's a little bit away, so maybe let's take it this. We can see that by introducing Polymer, it you know, at first sight appears like you know, there's a lot of complexity added, right? And if you know a little bit about trying to you know, test out IBC, like it, it already involved spinning up two chains, uh, spinning up a relayer, uh, making sure that you have all your dev accounts, relayer accounts, making sure that they're funded. That's a lot of you know, setup. And so the great thing about the IBC SDK, and it becomes really important because we add Polymer in the middle, so there's more chains, more relayers, is that it does all of that for you. Um, I think we can go through the quick start, just being mindful of time here. All right, so let's just follow. First thing we're going to do is we're going to build our CLI tool. Um, then this is a job that you're going to be doing as a contract uh, or a dApp developer, which is essentially both on the EVM side and the WASM side. You're going to have your you know, separate development environment. Um, for example, for Solidity and EVM, it's going to be hard hat. Uh, for Cosm WASM, uh, it might be something like um, you know, TS CodeGen, uh, for example, or, or just like you know, uh, developing your contract. Um, let's take a look. We're almost ready. There we go. Um, but essentially, once they are done, and done, that means uh, for, let's take a look. For the EVM side, this means making sure that you have in, oh, sorry, this is WASM. For WASM, it means that, you know, you have your WASM bytecode ready, and we're actually going to use this path um, in one of the commands. And for uh, the EVM, What it means for EVM is that um, it's already here, so let's make it a little bit more clear. In your artifacts uh, file, you will have your contracts, and then you will have the JSON file that essentially what's the important thing, that you have the ABI and that you have the bytecode, right? You could do this in Remix, for example, as well. Anything that just spits out a JSON file, including ABI and the bytecode, and on the other side, if you have the WASM bytecode, um, the IBC uh, SDK will know what to do. All right, so we have our uh, binary. Now we need to init. Uh, let's see. Oops, it's the wrong terminal. There we go. So initialization, what is this going to do? This is just going to set up your config file. Um, let's see if we can quickly uh, go to documentation. config. 
So if you've ever worked with you know, chains or relayers, this will seem familiar. So you just have some configuration for your chains. Um, so what do we have in chain name? We have a type because uh, we're working with Ethereum, uh, with Cosmos, and also Polymer, which uh, acts as the hub. Um, in the future, now we're just like you know having support for uh, Cosmos, um, so Wasm chains and Ethereum. In the future, we'll have support for many more. So there's be uh, there'll be a Docker repository from which we can uh, pull our Docker images with tags. And then, like I said, you know we have accounts, uh, developer accounts, relayer accounts, validator accounts that will be funded. Um, and then some information about the runtime. Now, the great thing is you don't have to worry about this if you just want to run with the defaults, uh, which is what we're going to do in a quick start. So let's get back to that. And then I guess the most important command is just you know starting. So here we have our start command. And while it's setting up, let's uh, look at it. So what we he have here is uh, we're just going to start the S SDK. And we have a connection from, uh, between e Ethereum and Polymer and a connection between Wasm and Polymer. Right? So very simple. And behind the scenes, uh, there's actually different implementations of relayers that are working. But the IBC SDK is smart enough to figure out which type of relayer to use, even if you, know, you, like, you know, order your chains a little bit different. In the, uh, in the connection command. And so what we're seeing here is that uh, we are initializing uh, our containers. So we see ETH execution, we see Polymer, Wasm, um, deploying the VIBC uh, core smart contracts. When we go back to our uh, diagrams, um, here we go. So this was this step when we um, move outsource the transport layer to Polymer. That meant that we have to have a virtual transport layer on the Ethereum site, and that's these uh, VIBC smart contracts. All right, so uh, we see we're setting up some relayers. It doesn't really matter too much uh, what, what the names is. Um, if you want this granular control, and if you really know what you're doing, you can go into the logs as well. So it's going to set up Docker containers for all of the relayers, all of the chains. Uh, you can look at the logs as well. But you know, that's more of a power user feature. What we want to showcase here is that you know, if you're just a contract developer, a beginner, uh, it's actually easy to set up. And I think this is really important because I used to be developer relations at, at the IBC team um, at the Interchain Foundation. And something I've seen with people who are on board to IBC, they, they, just have something that they want to test out. But the setup takes a long time because there's a lot of you know, difficult components. All right, so all of our uh, containers have started. There's also a command, ibctl show. Uh, let's just make this a little bit bigger for the formatting. That's nicer. Uh, so this is just going to give you an overview of all the Docker containers uh, that are running. And you can see there's now nine running. Um, if you had to spin up all of that yourself, that would probably take you a lot more time than it is now. All right, so now we have everything running. Uh, OK, so what is the next step? So we, we said that we have uh, smart contracts available. Um, if you deploy a smart contract, that means you will have to have an account that is funded to deploy it. Um, running a little bit out of time, so I'm just going to copy this. So this is on the Ethereum side, we're just deploying our smart contract. And then on the Cosm Wasm side, uh, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Also, a great thing is that we're using uh, mnemonics to create our dev accounts, our relayer accounts. So in between iterations, this is going to stay the same, which is also uh, very nice, which means I can just copy the commands and don't have to like, actually query uh, to get my, uh, my accounts. OK, so what do we do? Deploy contract IBC Messenger on ETH and deploy contract IBC Messenger on Wasm. And you also get the, um, the contract address. All right. Next step, we now have our smart contract deployed, which uh, played the role of IBC application. Now we need to create our multi-hop channel. 
And there is a command for that as well. So while it's doing it, let's take a look. Essentially what we have here is our one chain with the contract address, address from the contract that is deployed. And then same thing on Wasm, also just uh, the contract address and the chain name. And what you see happening there is uh, the chan open init, chan open try, chan open ack, chan open confirm. If you're familiar with IBC, you'll recognize the um, channel handshake. Instead, uh, here it's actually creating a multi-hop channel between our chain A and chain B, Ethereum and Wasm D, um, but it still has the same channel handshake that is uh, familiar to you. Okay, so this has worked. Now we have our you know, two smart contracts, we have our channel created. I think it's time to, uh, to send a packet. Uh, one thing that we can do in the meantime is do a query for our channels just to make sure that we're, uh, we're correct. And there we see, in fact, we do have a channel just called channel zero. And this is um, due to multi-hop. So we have our different connection hops, uh, connection zero and connection one. And you know, there's a number of uh, other uh, information that you can find. But uh, let's go back to the channel, I, I think I have the, uh, the message here uh, stored in an environment variable. So we're just going to send hello IBC. Uh, this, so like I said, oops, very uh, simple uh, application. And so this is a very long command, but this is basically uh, how you uh, execute or interact with uh, a contract on the WASM side. Uh, now we have our transaction sent. So we sent our uh, hello IBC message, and this doesn't really show a lot. So the last thing that we need to do is query our transaction, and I've copied the transaction hash. Uh, oops, I co copied a little bit too much. TX hash should not be there. All right. Uh, oh, and I also need to add uh, on which chain <laughs> I'm uh, querying the transaction. So that will be the WASM chain. And there we see uh, a lot of information, which is a good sign. And uh, when we scroll all the way up, we should have our message here somewhere. There we go. Message, hello, IBC. And so this means that all end-to-end -end IBC, we've sent a message from a local instance of Ethereum to a local instance of WASMD. Um, that's what you can do. The last couple of steps, by the way, is where you usually would go to your um, developer environment, so EVM or, or WASM, to your uh, developer environment and to your client library, which is a, a little bit uh, easier to interact um, than you know, having this massive command. But you can also do it from the CLI. Um, and obviously, you'll have to build uh, a lot more interesting applications, uh, but this really makes it uh, very helpful to get set up and just focus on, you know, writing your smart, smart contracts. Um, I'm going to be available over there for more questions because uh, someone from the Composable team uh, is going to do another great workshop. Thank you. Sure. Uh, if there's time for a couple of questions, yeah, sure. Um, yes, it, it uses the, the relays and uh, the daemons in the, in the background. Um, this one, um, actually it's the, the TypeScript relayer um, for the IBC parts and um, a custom built um, relayer for both uh, ways. So from Polymer to um, Ethereum, you have one relayer implementation and then uh, there's something else going in the other direction. Uh, in the future, there will probably uh, be under the same roof, the, the VIBC relayer. Um, but yeah, that, that's not something as application developer that you need to, you know, care about. And, and then when it comes to the ports, it seems like on the WASM side, it's also a WASM uh, port ID or a channel. Mm -hmm. yeah. Could this potentially be a transfer channel or is it always going to be a WASM channel? Uh, this could be a transfer channel, yeah. Because okay. uh, I think, I'm not sure, like a big part of development with 
it's execution messages over IMC right now is that people use loops instead of actual logic mm -hmm. contracts. So, and I appreciate remaining that to be a possibility basically for anyone who develops an IBC is. Yeah, there should be composability with like other IBC applications, especially you know if you have the Wasm side, which kind of combines uh, the the features of um, having your uh, Wasm um, smart contracts that are IBC enabled, but then also being able to interact with like you know the the native IBC modules that you get from the Cosmos SDK. Yeah, so hooks uh, like IBC mm -hmm. hooks should be supported. But if you want to make transfer channel, you could. Um, it still needs to be supported. I'm not sure if, if that's there right now, um, but in the future it will. Uh, I think Ari, you also had a question? Yeah, I have multiple questions. I don't think what is the most relevant. Maybe the most relevant would be if you could go into details in this, how do I phrase it, the supply chain from the Ethereum side. What are the assumptions that us, an application developer, are making on the interior side on all of the supply chain? Uh, it us a pack, the guarantees for a packet to be relayed from chain B to my application. What are the intermediary points? Do the intermediary uh, either off chain actors, either modules on Polymer, can be traced? Just that to be really good? Or is that too big of a question to go into? Uh, maybe that's a little bit too big of a question. Uh, I, I can say um, there is also, and maybe should uh, do it here. Uh, maybe let, let's uh, address that one outside. Mm -hmm. If anyone has any like, high level questions to go over, maybe we can do one more. Otherwise, uh, we can chat. So. Just wanted to show <laughs> there, there is also a trace packet uh, command, um, which is still being worked on, um, which will have some of that. But yeah, let's let's. Well, uh, I feel bad for the proposal guys, so <laughs> we'll wrap up. And, uh, All right. Thank, thank you, you for your attention.